Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this month's success story. I'm really excited to introduce Megan Weaver to you because she has had an idea for so long and she was so passionate about it and she was so educated about it and it took her a a little while to get out of her own way and make this thing happen. So I'm really honored to honor her today and bring her to you. I think you're going to love her story. She's, She's just got this wonderful business that is so important. And so Megan, thank you for being here with me today. Oh, well, thanks for having me. That was such a sweet intro. <laughs> so can you tell us about your business and who it is you help and how you help them? Sure. So uh, my business is called The Senior Pet Movement. And what I do is I help owners give pets, help owners give their pets the best quality of life possible moving into their senior years. And honestly, now that I have a dog, I'm learning a lot more about this whole senior pet thing and how people like love their dogs and they want to take care of their dogs. And so this is a new world for me. And so I know how passionate about this you are. Can you talk a little bit about why this was so important for you to bring to life? Sure. Well, I've always been interested in animals and I got my veterinary technician's license. And what I found was working at vet offices is they didn't have a lot of information about helping senior pets Mm -hmm. um, proactively. Mm -hmm. Um, So I received my certification in canine rehabilitation um, a couple years, like, well, I guess about seven years ago now. Oh, okay. And what I found was when I had my own rehab department where the pets that I worked with that had arthritis and their owners worked with them at home, they put in the work, they did massage, they did rehab exercises, that you actually saw a difference in their outcome. The dogs were moving around better. They were happier. The owners are like, they're jumping on the couch again. And it was so rewarding to see. And now I find that there's so much information out there that owners can learn, but they just need to know, know it's out there. So I want to educate them. Um, I have a bunch of tips and tricks that they can do with their pet at home. And on the flip side, I found a lot of vets that I work with just don't have the time to explain it to the owner. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, sure. So I want to be that person to teach the owner. So, you know, even take take that kind of stress off the vets because I have a lot of vet friends and I want to help them out too. (laughs) Well, you're so passionate. You're passionate about dogs. And I know that you have a, a long history with pets and how much you love your pets and how much your pets have affected your life positively. And the other thing is like, when I talk to female entrepreneurs, it's always because they want, they, they want to do this thing because they want to have an impact. And when you can see that one of your pet owners is feeling happier because their dog isn't suffering, I understand why you really wanted to make this a business that you were in charge of. So can we talk a little bit about some of the frustrations or limiting thoughts that you had in the beginning of your journey as an entrepreneur? Sure. I mean, where do I start, Jen? <laughs> There's so many. You know, I started an inkling of this was when I was working out at Method 360 and all the positive verbiage I was getting just from working out there, empowering women that we could actually do something if we wanted to, um, just really kind of stuck. And I kind of just put it in my back pocket about thinking about what I could do. Um, I wanted to stay home because I wanted to be with my girls uh, while they're younger. And so I wanted to change what I was doing. So I had this thought, but I didn't know how to put it into action. I mean, starting to be huge, huge, you know? So I, you know, even just thinking about it, just, I was nervous. I was afraid people wouldn't appreciate what I was doing or they wouldn't understand what I was doing. And would it resonate with pet owners? Mm. I felt like deep down, it really needed to be out there. And so it was over. So what I'm hearing is it was overwhelming. It was confusing. You were afraid of being judged, but you knew that you, 
you knew you wanted to to make a difference in pet owners' lives, in pets' lives, but you also wanted to have a different life for yourself. Yes, absolutely. So when I first met Megan, she came to do a course that I was doing called The Thriving Solopreneur at the time, and that was two summers ago. And mm-hmm. she did a lot of work chipping away and chipping away and chipping away. But there was a moment when, I, I hope this is okay to tell, but there was a moment when you were so sick of not just making the leap. You were sick of <laughs> right? Remember, you were just like, forget it. I really want this. So let's just go all in. And that's when we started coaching one-on-one together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It was in that moment. And I, I think this is so interesting. It was in that moment where she was sick of kind of like spinning around and trying things. She was like, let's just do it. And she committed. And it was in that commitment that everything changed for you. Right. Because kids, family, like, like it all gets in the way and that all goes first, you know? So finding time to do this was just kind of a hobby before. But when I was finally like, okay, let's get the lawyer to sign some paper. We're going to sign some papers and this is an actual business. I'm like, okay, let's start, start making some money. Commitment was so important. So how did you learn to trust yourself? How did you make that leap from like dipping a toe, dipping a toe, dipping a toe, dipping a toe to just like jumping in and knowing that requires self-trust? How did you make that decision? I've been doing a lot of work. I've always been kind of a more negative thinker and I want to change that just period in my life. And so why not start a business? Cause that just brings out all of the, <laughs> all of the negative things that you have of yourself, but I'm kind of taking it with grace and I'm kind of letting myself get a little down and then getting back up again and, and trying harder. And, uh, you know, I, I've said to you a bunch, I'm not the best writer in the world. And yet, you know, I took your creative content solutions course and, uh, you've really showed me a certain way to go through the, um, information and get out of my head what I want in my own words, which I love. Honestly. You, yeah. You didn't believe that you could do that. That, And so where I want to go with this next is marketing. Like you, you're an expert in your field. You're passionate about it. But what most entrepreneurs really don't want to embrace is that, oh, now I need to market myself. Now I need to put it out there. And that was a big place that you struggled because you have this story. I'm a sucky writer, but we totally worked on your voice. I mean, I get your email. So I see how much you've just like stepped into your voice and your passion and shows through. And so you've really like come a long way in understanding like, I can market myself. I can do this. What were some of the shifts that you made in your thinking? What are some of the strategies that you put into place to see yourself as like, okay, fine. I can develop a workshop. I can start a business, but now I need to do this other thing of being visible. What was that leap like for you? It was unknown to begin with. I had no idea that I would be spending a whole bunch of time on marketing, honestly. Mm -hmm. That was just probably a rookie mistake, I think. I think it's a mistake everybody (laughs) made. But what I do is I, you know, I certainly carve out time. So I'm, you know, time management for sure. And also I feel like I can do it because really when I get down to it and I start typing on my laptop, I get into the zone and I'm talking about things that I'm truly passionate about. And I always have the owner in mind of the owner that I'm helping. So it just seems really helpful to me to kind of have those thought processes when I'm going in, you know to say my message correctly, I guess. I love this. So you, <clears throat> when you go, like the first thing that you're, you're telling yourself is, look, I can do this. It's not, it's not like my default, but I can do it. And I'm, I, I'm, I like, I know exactly who I'm speaking to. So it's, it's easier. I know what this person needs to hear. I right. love that. Um, what is one thing you wish you had known that you would tell, like if you could go back in time and tell Megan from two or three years ago, what is she, what is she, what would she benefit from knowing? That you can do it. You, you can absolutely do it. That it's going to be hard and there's going to be some ups and downs, but you need to find someone that can help you through it. And you need to have faith in yourself and to make little shifts. And, you know, it's just something that deep down inside, you kind of need to believe in yourself and then take all the little tiny steps that you need to, to get there. Yeah. So when you say make little shifts, you're talking about things like for you, that was time management. Mm -hmm. It was, I'm also mindset. Well, mindset, right? The default to negative versus default, learning to default to positive. Mm -hmm. Also boundaries, I think are important for you because as a mom, you always put your kids first. And so there were times I know when you had to say, this is mom's time. This is me working on my business. 
Yeah. And I also, honestly, I felt that I actually spent more time with my kids when I did designate a certain time because then I wasn't throughout the day trying to do a little work and trying to be with them. I was like, okay, I'm going to give myself a half hour to an hour and then I'm yours the rest of the time. God, that's so beautiful. So um, there were so many little shifts that you made that I know have had a big impact. And I know, because I got to be on the other end of the call when you finished that workshop and we got all the tech stuff done and you put it out into the world. Can you describe what that feels like to take something that's been spinning for years and like see it come to life? It felt amazing. It felt like I had something tangible that I had in my head for so long. And I was I was able to put it out there for people to to help, you know, especially in this this time period where there's so much unknown. There's always time for you and your pet and massaging. And, you know, that just fills me up inside that I can help an owner in that way and a pet as well. I also want to say, like, I, my favorite thing was I loved the text you sent me when you were like, a stranger just bought my workshop. Nobody I knew. It. And that's like, that felt so amazing, right? It, it did. It, uh, you know, my parents bought one that they don't even have an animal. So I, you know, I, was, I loved the support that everybody gave me. But for some reason for me, it needed to be someone from the outside that just heard my messaging and my marketing that was like, I'm going to try this for my pet. And so I'm just so excited about yeah, that. For sure. Yeah, I love how excited you are. So what advice would you give for somebody who's at that place where they don't, they don't believe that they can be marketing their stuff or be creating their stuff and putting it out there? Like the, what, 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 what advice do you want to share with other women business, entrepre- uh, business owners? I mean, I would say get clear with who you're talking to at first and reach out to a business owner themselves or, you know, a friend or, you know, a business coach. You, you really helped me through without you. Honestly, I couldn't do this, oh, but, um, you all the hard work. <laughs> thank, thank you. So a business coach, of course, but being able and being hyper-focused to know what you're going to write about. Um, yes. I think it's helped me so much because there's so much I could talk about. And if I'm being so broad, I'm not going to be able to hone in and explain to someone what they really need to hear. Yeah. You've gotten really good at uh, focusing on one topic every single time you send something out. And so that's not like fire hosing people. It's really just like, Oh, this is what we're talking about today. Okay. I used to be very good at fire. hosing. (laughs) (laughs) You have learned how to contain. (laughs) So I love your work. I love following you. And I actually, the more that I talk to people, I realize like there's a lot of people with senior pets who want to let their animals live a healthier life longer. So how can people get in touch with you? How can they work with you? How can they download your freebie? Yeah, sure. I mean, every pet gets older, you know, if they're lucky, I guess. So there are definitely multiple ways. So they can find me at the seniorpetmovement.com. That's the website um, that has a whole bunch of blog posts and freebies. They can get on the email list as well. And then I'll get the freebies from there as well uh, from the website. And then they can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Senior Pet Movement. I highly recommend following the Senior Pet Movement online, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram, because not only will you get great information, but if you love animals, Megan always has great photos. And her voice is so fun and makes this so approachable. Like she doesn't take a serious approach to your dog getting older, which could be a really serious issue, right? So it's fun to follow you online. And I just really encourage people to do that. No, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've helped me personally so much with Max and I don't, I, I own this workshop and I purchased it. It wasn't even like, you know, <laughs> like, and I watched her go through it, but like I bought it cause I wanted to have it forever. And it's, it's really high quality. So I highly recommend this workshop if you have an older animal and I think you're probably going to come out with one for cats at some point, right? Yes. That's in the works. Um, hopefully it should be done by June. So Excellent. Megan, thank you so much for your time and your enthusiasm. And thank you for jumping in with both feet. I really appreciate it. I'm I'm happy that you are in the marketplace now. Thanks, Jen. Thanks so much. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go, I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free 
to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.